Good evening and welcome to another scene in London Ascending, a vampire venue. Tonight we have Laura sitting in her recently acquired upscale bar. Sitting the newspaper, checking on her laptop, smartphone. She'll pack it aside and she'll, she's waiting for company. She's someone she needs to talk to. Eh, not too long, but a little. Um, a certain Tremere that she hasn't had too much contact with thus far. She's looking forward to talking with Mr. Vincent Hart. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, the mascot of Churchill Insurance, I mean, uh, Vincent Hardcastle, um, <laughs> arrives at a. Uh, well, where, where Solholm is, where Miss Solholm is, <laughs> in, uh, in his wonderfully ever so slightly outdated uh, suit and tie has his cane from this time. It is actually important to note that at the Elysium, Mark Castle did not have his cane, so it might be a bit odd that he had it in both occasions. Uh, Laura has met him, but not at the Elysium. There is this very, very distinct gap. Hmm. Um, As my computer crashes into fucking oblivion, what is going on? <laughs> I can still hear you, but oh, excuse. Uh, okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, for whatever reason, my computer just decided to play pranks where the screen literally went dead, and I thought it died, but it didn't. <laughs> a great start to the scene, everybody. Uh, yeah. So Hardcastle. Um, this is a, where Laura always hangs out, right? It is. Uh, it's been recently stated that this is a place where she has. It is now her place. It is referred to as a place that she is in charge of. Ah, great. Yeah. So, in his slightly outdated costume, as it were, still formal, still good. It's still fucking expensive, but. It's not in style. And he does look a bit distinct. He always has as he wanders up to uh, Laura as he just says, ah, Miss Solholm, uh, pleasure to see you again. Likewise, please sit down, make yourself comfortable. Ah, thank you. Um. I am uh, sure you have. Uh, I had a lot of things to see to, uh, but I believe you have by now heard of what happened at the meeting. Yes, I believe there were some insults thrown around. Well, I'm not aware of the punishment. Well. That was one of the things. The former seneschal debased himself, and the queen was forced to accelerate his education, shall we say. It would seem that the, the Mercavian elder, Mr. Fitzpatrick and Garnett, Met out the punishment with a rather striking enthusiasm. I see. He doesn't seem particularly impressed by this at all, or by Garnet, or whatever's being said, basically. But more importantly, that the infernalists have been dealt with, and the victors have been voted and celebrated by the queen. Mm. 
No, I'm certain there shall be more in the near future. These things tend to retreat to the darkness from once they came and then return. It is a reoccurring pattern that has plagued us since the dawn of time. Unfortunate as it is, of course. As well as the Sabbat. With their arrival, the Queen has stated that she wishes people to form coteries to prepare for this eventual problem that she sees the city will face sooner rather than later. Oh, sorry, you cut out there. I didn't hear that statement. Uh, she, she just says like that, that um, the Queen has declared um, that she wants people to form uh, coteries to deal with this bad threat uh, sooner rather than later. Yes, well, I suppose it would be wise to stamp out this incursion before it becomes too prominent. Quite so, but. I know you are native to these parts, but have you given any given any thought to perhaps joining a coterie? I have not seen the formation of any coteries thus far, nor have I been invited to any. Hmm. I've been considering it for it is not the most prominent concern I currently have. It's simply one among many. I do believe that the Committee of Four Squares has inquired as to your current commitments to a coterie. Camilla Vasquez? Yes. He kind of raises my brows if he doesn't know who that person is. What is her um, last name? Uh, the Knight of Flowers, uh, Lisa's character. Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, Camilla Fortescue, Basque, something like that, right? Yeah, uh, Cam Cam Camilla Fortescue? Fortescue, oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. Um, she says, well, I can deliver a message to her if you're interested. She does not have a coterie either, but she thought that you might be interested. Interesting. Well, if she is inquiring into rejoining a coterie, I'd be more than happy to start up a partnership with her. It would be most Fitting, I believe. I do believe that she would welcome you uh, with open arms in her salon if you wanted to discuss it with her. I'd be very much interested in taking part in this discussion, I must say. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. That is why I'm here. She smiles. It is Harpy's duty, after all. Indeed. You perform it admirably. Thank you. Uh, she, she will just say. So, um, 
What do you make of this uh, rumor of about uh, former members of the court being involved in their number? Pardon, sir. Uh, what do you make of this rumor of Sabat, of the Sabat incursion? And uh, some of them being defectors, being former members of the court. There is a. Some navel gaze and some beard stroking almost. He doesn't have a beard, of course. <laughs> some some stubble stroking, as it were. He seems to analyze this. Uh, he doesn't really care about the Sabbat, but the notion of defectors is somewhat concerning to him. I'd find it concerning that so many... would leave the court with such willingness, unless it can be proved that their minds are not their own. When the power hunger goes, at some point, they do not need to be swayed by others. Their minds are broken enough as it is. Well, there are a lot to our abilities which could enforce the faction to take place, although it is more likely that it is simply a power play made by disgruntled political watchouts. This game of politics is largely not my focus, however, so I do not claim to be an expert on the matter nor do I have any particular care as to why these individuals defected. My greater concern is if it came from my own, in which case I doubt punishment would happen. I doubt anyone from your clan would do such a thing. You are far among the most powerful of our sect. Defections among our clan do tend to be rarer than others. We do take certain measures to ensure that it does not happen. And we generally ensure loyalty before uh, our child are released. She just nods and smiles. Um, and out of character, uh, does anyone else approach uh, Laura's place? This effect will come in as soon as, uh, as uh, voices are uh, more silent. He's dressed in another suit um, <coughs> and is. Um, he seems to be in a merry mood. Hmm. Laura will, will just. Oh, here we have one of the conquering heroes. Mr. Peck, may I once again congratulate you on your quite spectacular victory? She will curtsy to him and just. Please. Of course you may, my heart. You may indeed. Although I do not find myself anywhere near. The idea of being a hero, uh, your congratulations are well received and understood. Um, yes, um, I find myself in a very um, position to have had a little part in the undoings of the man called the Master, the uh, cultist leader who was definitely a formidable adversary. Hmm. Please, come join us. Mr. Pack will definitely um, take a seat, uh, one of the seats, where he can sit alone, and he orders another claret as soon as he can. And um, 
he will cross his legs and then look at Vincent and say, Ah, Mr. Hardcastle, I'm, um, I'm happy to see you. A pleasure, Mr. Pack. Good to see you again. I have had been for a while now, um, since I heard you were in town, especially with the upcoming um, scuffle we were going to have, and the recent battle I found myself in has found me an uh, understanding of the great need I have for something that packs a punch more than a silly umbrella. Something that packs a, packs a punch, you say? Interesting. I could perform many tasks that would involve the creation of something that would involve such power. Of course, it depends on entirely on your preference. Well, at the moment, I am still in my mind's eye discussing what the shape and size would be of that which I want to wield against our enemy. My, um, my romantic side told me that I should go with a valiant um, sword-like object, um, such as Excalibur or something like that. But then again, I saw my friend Mr. Garnett wield an axe with such precision that made me wonder if maybe an axe is more sufficient for the brute task of chopping down heroes. And then there's also such eloquent things like a dagger, which, um, which have something of a more, um, how should I say, in classic taste to it, some more eloquently a weapon. So, as of this moment, I am in quite a diversity. However, um, I assume that um, one of my specialists for my, uh, for my clan could definitely help me out with the shape and size. Uh, Camilla, for instance, who seems to be quite a um, swordsman, if, uh, if you haven't noticed. Yes, so I have. It shouldn't be too much of a problem to grant your weapon the power it requires. Of course, when it comes to such techniques, prestation is involved in all things in our society, but I'm sure we can work that out later. Most devices should be appropriate for our uh, techniques, although Weapons that involve a more up and closer personal contact tend to be more effective. We can grant them flammable capacities. Oh, fine. It sounds, um, it sounds actually good, to be honest. Um, but I will have to think about it because if the new war comes along, I tend to fill the position I had before, which will be much more away from the battlegrounds and more on the side of the tactical planning. So influence would be my game in the defenses of our city. Um, so I am looking, and I will say this out loud, especially for you to be in store as a harpy, I would love you to be in court. Of a code we get to join me in um, the wielding of influence. Our character, the tell of Peck, is that um, he licks his tongue and lip, no, he licks his lips when he's talking about um, things he finds specifically pretty or um, tasty. Ah.
Yes, I've heard about the formation of Coteus around the city, and I've heard that yours has involved itself uh, quite vigorously already. All the credit to them. Fine, what do you mean? Have I must heard or were you at the uh, battle involving the Infernalists? Right, but that was not done with a coterie, I believe. Mm. I used the term coterie loosely in this instance. Right, now that was more of a joint venture where, um, where one of my um, um, uh, uh, clan members informed me and Mr. Garnett actually uh, most of the planning when it comes to the uh, information gathering uh, came from um, Mr. Nygaard. We were just, um, I should we say, the hammer and bill, so to speak, to his work. I see. Well then. Either way, it was a successful venture, and one hopefully that shall be repeated with the formation of these coteries. Perhaps that is what gave the Queen the idea to begin with, the success of this joint venture. Well, I do believe Mr. Nygaard was looking for a more um, hands-on coterie, something more of a uh, striking force kind of thing. Well, I personally, um, due to my status as well as the uh, the appalling of useless violence. I would rather go for organizing violence than actually participating in it. Indeed, there are many kinds of leadership. Some lead more effectively from the front than the back, and vice versa. Oh, and some yes. are in neither position. As I do remember, uh, a member that fights very strongly from the front is Camilla, but I also know that Mr. Corbin uh, was quite formidable uh, with his um, a sword. A yes, both are most talented fighters. It is. A pleasure often to watch their work in action. Miss Laura? Yes? Um, would you be, um, would you be informed about any influence codes that are about to be raised that could be interested in a humble member such as I? Well, I have given one interest party the, the information of a, well, information from one interest party to another, but as of any coteries being formed as of now, no, not yet. interested in interest in joining a coterie, and if I may ask what shape would it be for you to participate in? Well, I would probably want to join a coterie that would, well, have some of the same functions as what you're looking for. Right. Then I will keep that in mind, and I hope that we will be working together in the um, in the situation if this uh, war comes along. Or at least this is a strike, this is a bot. Um, to take any away any sort of uh, uncertainties about this bot, my lady and gentlemen, um, I can assure you that the adversary known um, to be the master has definitely cursed us in a way that he said that he was only but one man and his pack, I, I do believe he used the word pack, 
uh, will be coming soon to rid the city of their um, usurper and her constituents in court. Mm. This would indeed be from the person that was at least somewhat related with the former prince. Oh yes, I believe he was either his grandson or his son, I'm not sure. I believe the person that we destroyed was the grandson of our most beloved uh, prince. Hmm. Well, you would see anyone but himself as a usurper, person. That does not tell us too much. Um, for the record, you're not talking about Vincent as a usurper, or are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying that a, uh, a person who is a madman and leader of an occultist, it's oh, probably yeah. pretty clear that the only one you would not see as a usurper would be himself, because he feels okay. that he owns the uh, the throne. Yeah. So that's what you say. Sorry, I totally misheard for a second. I swear I haven't. And then I'm like, am I gonna have to make self control anyway? <laughs> it seems seems unlikely, doesn't it? That a former child of a prince, a grandchild of a prince, could master so much hatred so quickly for only that reason. Mm. One would think that it would require more, mm. more reasoning to be so animated to bring this about here. Anyway. Well, I can tell for one thing, he isn't like his grandfather at all. This was a very respectable man, a man who ruled London for a very, very long time, and a quite distinguished one at that. At this time, uh, let's say that Garnet enters. So he's no. Yeah, he slithers in. <coughs> Big smile on his face. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Picking uh, his finger. Yeah. My son is sure. Ah, Laura, darling, as he strides forward and, you know, bows actually quite low to her. She, she curtsies as well as she can, which is it's good to see you here. You honor me by your presence. Please, Respect Laura, the rise as soon as the Seneschal enters and give the Seneschal a very respectful slow bow. <laughs> darling Peck, as he returns a very slow bow. And we'll look over to Mr. Hardcastle and just give a smile. Hardcastle, my good man, as he strides over and firmly claps his hand. Ah, uh, Seneschal Garnet, a pleasure to see you at this time. Good <laughs> bow, but it's not nearly as as graceful as uh, as Mr. Peck's, most likely. I mean, I mean, it's still it's still graceful. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not like he's got no dots in etiquette. But um, you know, it's it's probably not on his level because he's not god tier. Um, <laughs> neither does he seem to care as much. <laughs> oh, Garnet just smiles warmly. Please, please sit down. Don't be all bowing and standing on my account. As Garnet just slides in, just reverence, you know, seems to have a quite happy smile on his face. Yeah, Our castle sits down merrily. <laughs> Yes. Any uh, news or anything, any further decrees? Not of yet. Uh, the Queen is tired. She had a long night last night, you know, deliberating over her child's actions, I assume. I will know more in the next night. Be assured, Miss Laura. He just smiles. Well, I heard that the same person was institutionalized. Yes, a tragedy, really. He had a new perspective, you could say. 
kind of just smiles wickedly. Hmm. Laura doesn't say anything to that. And she just she just takes it in for a couple of seconds and just says, I'm assuming Mr. Fitzpatrick was well as gentle as he was supposed to be with a ruffian and a so disrespectful young person. <laughs> you could say that. He well, the moment that you say that Mr. Temple rise up and he uh, he is startled. And he says, oh, I'm so sorry, we thought I forgot. Um, my dear Laura, uh, from me as Primogen of Victoria Law, I would like to grant you from our clan a uh, minor boon for the uh, very big hostility Sebastian has shown you and very um, ungentlemanlike behavior in court last time. I do very much apologize hereby in front of the Seneschal and in front of Miss Hardcastle so very deeply. I thank you very much, although I must say my uh, I put myself in somewhat of the firing line, as so to say. No, I no, want no. To, I, no, want no. To... I won't have it. You do there's no blame on you. His behavior was uncalled for. I was trying to get in his way so that he would not bother the Queen, but hmm, such things could apparently not be avoided, tragically. Nonetheless, I do believe that you are entitled to this boon that I bestow upon you as primogen of the clan. Hmm. She, uh, she nods and she says, uh, I'm honored to receive it from such a high place. You are truly a, an honorable man. Mr. Peck will smile and he will bow. Vincent just seems to be uh leaning back against his chair and analyzing the discussion not really saying anything not really speaking up either he just seems to be kind of looking almost as if he's looking through him into the distance hmm. well for me at least who was not here during the latest big invasion or attempt of insurgents um i'm assuming that there are many we have an idea of what they intend to do well what would be most likely for them to attempt at first would they need um, the support the, uh, run. i see that their grand master plan will be to assassinate um, myself, Miss Camilla, and the prince, because we cause the most damage and are the most well remembered for our deeds in the war. But I assume that they will strike out with anyone that has either been in the previous war or has anything to do with uh, the support of the current queen. First hmm. stage is always temptation. Then comes the fall. Garnet just adds a smile. That's probably what they're going to do next. Tempt. And then when they have enough numbers, begin to strike. Hmm. Well, I'm sure that they can be tempted as well. <laughs> oh, it's most certainly he adds a wicked little smile to Laura. Hmm. That could be a possibility and as far as I recall the Sabat are not known for their well reluctance to engage their enemies and if we get them to do that prematurely I'm sure we could gain a 
perhaps an early way to dampen their spirits somewhat. A strike on morale. Very, very, very well thought. Mm. But we would first need information on our enemies before we can strike at any sort of juggler soft point. Yes. I'm aware. Well, I'm not, I'm not, one, I'm not one to dampen your mood on any sort of plan you might have. It was just me thinking out loud about the chance we just have to face. Hmm. I am more thinking of if it is a prolonged conflict, there are ways of, hmm, what shall we say, requiring mm -hmm. certain provisions and keeping them safe for a drawn out conflict. Hmm. Garrett just nods, you know, processing. Hmm. It's not yet <coughs> something I am completely able to facilitate, but hmm. some ways down the line, not too far from now, I might be able to have something up and running. Hmm. I do believe that this would help us immensely. Do we actually have any substantial information on this about right now? Not current, not currently, but I will be meeting with our darling Scourge to discuss the inform any information we have and analyze. But right now, nothing. At the moment, I am also very much unaware of how many of their members already uh, have taken a place in our city. I mean, where there's one, there could be more already in place, waiting to strong. <clears throat> Information is key, my friend. Information is key. <clears throat> we might have, I might even have an extra um, traitor within our midst. Mm. So we must be very aware, mm. aware of um, our context and surroundings. Oh, kind of turns to Harcastle. You have a way of dealing with that, I'm assuming. Correct, Mr. Harcastle. Pardon? De routing out traders, I hear you're Chimera, very good at finding things. He adds with a smile. Yes, of course, there's certain requirements to this. Naturally, we do not simply magic away our defectors, but we do have very diverse means as to tracking down said anti-tribute and defectors of all kinds of course because they're unique in their disloyalty they all share that base similarity mm. although we do tend to ensure that it does not happen to begin with of course Hmm. And if we establish this security, begin a chokehold on the floor, like strangle the snake before the poison seems to spread, would you be, would that be accommodable for you, Mr. Harcastle, or your clan? I suppose it depends on the definition, but yes. If we can find one, then we can find them all. And we do have many means to find one. Mm. I'll be looking into my own contacts to ensure that. Well, I'm going to be collating some data to see if we can find anything recent 
that would suggest a location that this bat might use or a name. If you need men for this operation to make a, a strike team during the day, um, you're welcome to let me know and I'll see what I can cook up. I believe I'm able to help you in that regard, but yes, I will look into your services if it turns out that is a requirement for our task. Maybe well, perhaps. If it's necessary, I don't want to bother you with anything else. <clears throat> we should also have any new arrivals to the city immediately tested when they arrive, I believe, for any indications. Would you agree? As he kind of looks around the table. Ah, yes. I did this for many years during my neonatehood, for lack of a better phrase. No, I, I consider the phrase to be accurate as, as it is. We have all passed our neonate status and our neonate foot, <laughs> as you should say. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's like the word for what you're describing. Perhaps also, Mr. Harcastle, you could present me with a report of your data and maybe I could spread word among my clan. We are, after all, very good at hiding in places. He just adds with a smile. I'll send you the relevant information. I wouldn't want to bury you in paperwork, Miss Herschel. <laughs> Darling, paperwork is my speciality. He has the ads with a wink and, you know, takes a drink of the drink he brought with him. Uh, there is a moment of thought uh, before uh, Hardcastle just says, well, I'm not sure whether to view that as a relief or a tragedy. <laughs> he just adds uh, sort of a grin. But yes, if you can begin to enforce this policy of testing to outsiders of the city, I believe that would be our first priority. Yes, that is something virtually all along our clan can do for you. I'll have a new need look into it. Strict, my darling Harncastle. Keep it strict and watertight, no exceptions. He adds a, just kind of an odd smile. Of course, of course. Hmm. So my little kittens, who's going to be making cold rays? Garner adds with just almost this playful smile as he leans back. I hear yeah. they're rampant around the city. Well, beginning to form anyway. Well, it is our uh, Queen's decree, so we would all join one, I suppose. Hmm. I will have to join one soon. Oh. Be a member of Formula One. Although I am not quite. Well, I am fairly new to this city, so I still need to figure out who I would. Well, who are my resources best with, so to say? Mm. Why? Very wise, Miss Laura. He just adds a smile. Of course, yourself, Mr. Peck, would always be welcome material for a country. She smiled. <laughs> he returned, I'm appreciated you think so. And it's kind of you in your thoughts that way. He just adds a smile, you know, a smirk. Hmm. I have been seeing some individuals begin to form what could be roughly called coteries, although I am still waiting to see what the decisions of others are for making one for myself. I would not want to 
run into a dynamic I would not fit in, would not be productive to our goals. Do you not see yourself wheeling a battle axe around a uh, glorious battlefield, Mr. Harcastle? He thinks on this. A battle axe is rather obnoxious in my opinion, although I'm sure other clans might disagree with me. Garnet shoots Peck a wink. Oh, it's quite a pliable, I can assure you. I've always preferred more precise weaponry. It has its place, but... Are we still talking about the sword, or are we talking about the, the favourite weapons of the Lord Barat, uh, Shirley Barat? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can perform many different roles, depending on what is required of me. But oh, you're like a diamond stone with more sides than I thought. Very interesting, thank you. Yes, my only yeah. true concern would be a cultury culture that would breed opposition, rivalry rather than unity. Which is why I have not made or taken any offers yet. Hmm. Well, a coterie of all shapes and sizes seems the most pliable after all. He just looks, surveys the table, all of us have individual talents to compensate our weaknesses. This is true, indeed. Hmm. That's quite true. We'll see where the chips fall. Hmm. Yes. Of course you are right. But Mr. Garnett makes a point very accurately. It it makes me wonder if my choice for an all influence country is something that is needed in a versatile time such as these. After all, I heard that battles are no longer with warlords and pawns for men, but are simply fought in strategic ways with gunfire, tanks, and battleships. Well, hopefully we will not be needing tanks and battleships in the city. Well, obviously, but um, I do understand that I won't be able to um, make a better ship sail the Thames, or that I would have the um, authority to drive the tank along um, along Maine. However, um, if you interchange the um, the battleship as something that's going in water then we might consider a, um, a group of Nosferatu to be very much under the water of our city. And a tank could be a well-placed Bruja or Gangrel in a place where it's big, or indeed a, um, a venture that is uh, very well skilled in their resilience. Tanks and battleships, my lord. Thanks and battleships. Hmm. I could probably supply us with a tank if it was really necessary. Mm -hmm. I think Torben will be. Uh, I think he could oblige if we need one. I'm quite certain he is proficient within discipline of fortitude. But... Well, I do let it know that I am willing to work with any and all clans. I do not hold different in high or low clan. I just feel the very need and willingness to 
be an efficient member of an efficient protein. Mm. And as I said, they need tanks, pepper ships, and so on and so forth. Mm. And the odd precision bomber. Smiles to Mr. Peck. Huh. Well, that is true. I will see if they can. Probably. I will have to find someone to make myself useful for. I don't think that can be done. The Tremere is more than happy to uh, extend his awkward silence, by the way. Yeah, so the Mark Haven. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, nothing is official yet, but if you want me to, I can bring news. Let it be known that certain people are looking for coteries. Of course. It is at your discretion, of course. Hmm. If you feel the need to drop some hint of people who want to take initiative, you may, Miss Laura, but I'll wait to see what the sharks do. Garnet will just have a little smile. Mr. Peck will smile as well, just to see he mentioned sharks, and um, uh, he, well, Mr. Peck will keep silent, but his mind will go on thinking about if he should or should not take initiative, because sharks are such nice people in some ways. Um, Laura will just look at Garnett as she says that. She'll just look at him. I would, hmm, my initial, I would think that you would know quite a few things about what sharks would do. <laughs> oh, you have no idea, my darling Laura, no idea. You just add, almost like just leaning forward like this. She just, she just nods a little and smiles back. And, um, well, well, I'm sure we will all find someone. If nothing else, I believe that there will be neonates and then Silla that will happily accept our gracious help. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to watch the younglings try so hard. Kind of just lead back. Mm. Well, infernalists dealt with. The way word well, former Senator has been taught a lesson. Now we need to wait for some parts. And Find out about this serial killer. Have you heard anything new about this? Other than other victims? Not recently, but... And if you wish to, we can maybe perhaps look into it together, Laura. Yes, I'm actually due to meet the sheriff. Not too long from now, hopefully. This um, serial killer, is, the, is that the one... Who's leaving all the women in the with the horns and stuff? Yes. The I've heard about hunter? that. I didn't know if it was true or not. The deer hunter? I don't know. I simply want to make sure that it's not someone who is 
well, connected to us that would endanger the masquerade. Well, maybe it could be a suboptimal. I mean, even worse, and even more reason for us to look into the, it. Um, the murders, if they use war, the might uh, are very theatrical. Mm. I do but, have. I do have ways to analyze things and see things, Miss Laura. So if you need my assistance, please. My door is always open. You just know. I would be most honored, my senator. <laughs> and um, yeah, she, she will just acknowledge that and just say, uh, well, as soon as I hear from the sheriff, I will hopefully, uh, if there is something to move on, contact you and we can look at it. If you wish. Oh, I would be most honored, Laura, to accompany you in this fine task. Garner just smiles at her. What of you, Mr. Harkas? Will you not join us on this escapade? There is a moment for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have idea is splendid. Oh, my good man. It can be an adventure together. <laughs> Garnet just kind of like slaps him on the shoulder. There is a, just kind of a a flat thud as you hit him. <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's just like, oh, that, that. It, it's literally a joke for a flat line. <laughs> Uh, but he doesn't appear particularly disturbed or annoyed. <laughs> Garnet just kind of winks at Laura. Well, at least it might liven his spirits anyway. He's <laughs> kind of just leans back, you know, like just smirking at Hardcastle. Hmm. Well, I shall contact the both of you. Simply to say that I have gathered this information and you can you can then confirm or deny whether or not you want to help out of course. Hmm. Perfect. Again, just smiles happily. She uh she just smiles. No, it's sit back a little and, and just uh, looks at her watch and she's just gonna check out and um, she will just oh, she seems she just smiles, sit back and, and enjoys the silence silence for a moment. Ah yes. The the sweet sweet silence of Garnet and uh, Hardcastle engaging in brilliant escapades of absolute nonsense in the distance. <laughs> Elders, yeah. uh, have fun too, guys. <laughs> well, it's boring and stodgy as all those neonates like to think. <laughs> Hashtag not all Elders. Yeah, Garnet's just going to sit and chill and steal occasional glances at Laura and Harcastle. You know, making this Harcastle uncomfortable as he can with a wicked grin on his face. The hand bomb mustache is raised from Vincent as he appears to be smiling slightly. It's uh, almost bubbles up and down. Nice. Um, Laura will just uh, look around and um, just look to the others and just say, So, have any of you anything else? Anything maybe you know, an experience in the cinema? Anything you can recommend? It's been Sometimes I've seen it play to the like. I'm 
guy just uh, looks at Laura. Have you ever seen the movie Sleeping Beauty? He just adds a smile, oddly, you know, just craning his head. The movie? Hmm. Well, I'm assuming you are referring to... She stops herself and she just says, a live action movie or... I believe they're called animation. Ah. I don't believe so, no. Oh, my darling Laura, the song Once Upon a Dream, well, if you listen to it, you'll uh, discover many things about everything. It kind of just stands up and other letter. Gentlemen, I might see you once upon a dream, but who knows? It's the next round he... not understanding what we Garnet decides with this mischievous smile and just, you can actually yeah, hear him. Um, as he's yeah, up. I'm going to roll something. Okay. <laughs> because Laura might, uh, she's not sure what he's, she hasn't seen what he's talking about, but, uh, oh, and that, no, that, then, then she will just smile to, uh, and she will just smile to uh, to Garnett and just say, "Have a very good evening, my son." If he is leaving, <laughs> yeah, he's leaving. As he just yeah. he kisses her hand like a, like a noble nobleman and just bows very low and just winks at Peck and bows very low and adds with this sort of sultry smile to Harry Castle, You know, like see you later, darling. As he just you know spins on his heels and you know strides out, arrogant, serpent-like as ever. Hmm. Uh, at which point, uh, Hart Castle would just shake uh, Miss Soham's hand because, well, I mean, they could all just kiss her hand, but it's it's, it's going to get dry and wrinkled. Um, so I'll just shake it and just say, "Good evening." Okay, Ms. Laura is now rolling a self-control roll because no, I'm kidding. <laughs> wrinkled, dry. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you are. Uh, he doesn't say that. Uh, he just says, good evening, Miss Sohan. I thank you for inviting me out this evening. It's been the most informative and productive night. I shall see you in the coming nights, I hope. Likewise. Have a very good evening, Mr. Hardcast. And uh, he will turn around and begin walking away. Uh, his cane kind of tapping in rhythm as he walks. And then he just wonders, what the fuck did he just agree to with Garnet? Uh, my guess would be fat catching fish with your bare hands in Hyde Park Corner, but you'll know <laughs> soon, uh, soon enough. Uh, Laura will, uh, will sit with Mr. Peck um, as the two others are left. And for the moment, the two of them will probably chit chat about certain things you probably could go, go out and do. Um, and with that, I believe the scene will come to a close. Thank you very much, players, for playing and watchers for watching. Good night.